you want a war, you're gonna get one. Now get the guns, the drugs, from my generation, I'll take the Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to the 3rd of August 1998. WWF Raw's War comes from San Diego, California tonight while Nitro's live from Denver, Colorado. Later in the week WCW's gonna present Road Wild 98. That event takes place on Saturday the 8th of August and as always it will get covered on the channel. I think you guys know how this works by now. Jam Up Guy James Brock, better known as Jammy James, recently attended a Lucha Patron show in California and he wore the classic Kicker Be Kick and Reliving the War shirt. So thank you very much for sending in your photo James and welcome to the Jam Hall of Fame. Let's get started then and let's check out Nitro's first 60 minutes. Larry Zabisco broke his Texas gag order last week and he's not here for the beginning of Nitro. He's in the back having a meeting with TNT Time Warner executives. The commentators announce a tag team title match for the main event of Nitro, Hall and Jan vs Sting and Luger, and our first piece of business is an interview with Diamond Dallas Page. Now, just like last week, the WWE completely removes key footage on Monday Nitro which is absolutely essential for understanding what's going on. So let me show you what happened. Hollywood Hogan and Eric Bischoff tried to take over the Tonight Show. Things got physical and Leno decided to leave, for a commercial break anyway. Leno and his security team come back and Leno announces that Hogan's friend DDP's in the building and DDP smacks Hogan across the face before security rush in to escort the NWO guys away. Hogan challenges Leno to show up in Sturgis this Saturday, DDP talks Jay into it, so Jay Leno's gonna team up with DDP in the road wide main event to take on Hogan and Bischoff. And look, I understand why they use celebrities and after Bash at the Beach who can blame Eric, right? But come on, Jay Leno in front of a bunch of bikers? To be fair, the pay-per-view did do reasonably well in terms of buy rate but not near as well as Bash at the Beach. DDP says that Eric Bischoff stole Leno's jokes, he stole his set and Eric ran Leno off his own show, so convincing Jay to fight wasn't that hard. DDP's gonna rough Hollywood and Bischoff up and make things easy for his tag team partner, so Jay has nothing to worry about. Leno's currently in training, DDP's flying out to resume Jay's training for the Road Wild main event after Nitro tonight. Sleazy E, Hollywood scum Hogan, you will feel the DDP then defeated the Barbarian. Barbie tried his best to avoid the diamond cutter but he ended up taking Paige's finish in the end. Zabisco gets out of his meeting with the Time Warner dudes. He said to them that the only time he's ever stepped out of line was when someone approached the commentary table to cause trouble. So WCW need to do better in terms of keeping their staff safe from the NWO. NWO later with Eric Bischoff was up next. Monica Lewinsky was the hot topic in the news so Eric's gonna make jokes about Leno and Lewinsky. One of them being, what does Monica Lewinsky and Jay Leno have in common? They both suck at their jobs. Just like last week, Hollywood Hogan joins Bischoff and the Hulkster says he's gonna bust up DDP real bad at Road Wild. The folks over at NBC noticed the ratings go up when Hollywood and Bischoff appeared on The Tonight Show, so Jay Leno's crew are now bowing at Hogan's feet and the NBC guys have asked Hogan to take Leno out at the pay-per-view. They now want Hollywood and Bischoff and not Mr. Big Chin. Hollywood hopes that Kimberly Page took out an insurance policy for her husband because that's the only way she can cash in on DDP. There'll be no mercy in Sturgis, Leno better watch out blah blah blah. I can't even begin to talk about my lack of interest in this road wild main event. Disco Inferno comes out to the ring to introduce his tag team partner. There's no tag match here by the way, it's a one on one match against Psychosis, but Disco felt he should give his mate a special introduction before the match begins. Gotta be quick, gotta be fast, here comes Das Wunderkind with Bratwurst for my ass. It's Tokyo Magnum ye dumb motherfuckers.
Big Bad was. All right, that didn't work out too well, and his disco replaced Alex with Tokyo Magnum. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. Within a matter of mere seconds, the NWO Scott Norton comes down and he powerbombs both competitors. He did this because he didn't get booked for a match, so he's making his own match. And if there's anyone backstage who wants a piece of Norton, then they should come on down and try their luck. Hugh Morris walks down, he gets powerbombed too, and it's so so annoying that the opportunity to have some fun with a Tokyo Magnum match has been taken away from us. Goldberg wants to address the giant, remember the big man chokeslammed Goldberg at the end of Nitro last week. In order to get at the giant, Goldberg says he's gonna enter the black and white vs Wolfpack battle royal this week at Road Wild. And Goldberg doesn't care if he has to go through Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, The Disciple, Brian Adams, or even the icon Sting. Goldberg wants the giant. Sting then comes down to the ring and he squares up to Goldberg as the crowd goes nuts, but the moment's ruined when the giant and some NW Hollywood guys show up. Goldberg leaves the ring and he ends up chasing the giant backstage, and Bret Hart then appears to presumably talk to Sting. Sting pushes Bret away before walking off. After a commercial break, Sting finds Lex Luger led out backstage. Remember, Lex is supposed to compete in the main event tonight. It appears that Sting leaves the building afterwards too. The commentators say that Sting headed in the direction of the building exit. We wrap up our number one with a Hacksaw Jim Duggan vs Brian Adams match. Duggan was able to fight off Vincent, but Brian Adams' awful pile driver was enough to send Jim home with another loss under his belt. Nothing to see here, folks. The Rock cuts a promo to kick off Raw's war, Nitro continues on with a Bret Hart promo. On the premiere episode of Sunday Night Heat, The Rock and Owen Hart defeated Kane and Mankind to get a shot at the tag team titles tonight on Raw, and The Rock says the entire world's ready for Rock and Owen to take on Austin and Undertaker. The Rock wants the match to begin right now, so he tells the champs to come on out so he and Owen can win those tag belts. Sergeant Slaughter comes out instead, the nation's biggest enemy, and Rock says if Undertaker and Austin don't come out now then that's a forfeit. Slaughter should know his role before The Rock lays the smackdown on his candy ass, but then the glass shatters, the crowd pops, Austin walks down to the ring with Undertaker right behind him. Kane shows up too though, and The Undertaker gets distracted. Austin has to fight Owen and Rock all on his own while Mankind also rushes out to fight the Phenom. Kane leaves, he comes back again, but The Undertaker and Kane don't get physical at all during this fight. Austin's able to hit Owen with a stunner, but Rock slips away before Austin delivers another. The rest of the nation show up and Austin grabs a steel chair to even the odds, so this means our tag team match won't be happening just yet. On Nitro, Mean Gene stands outside Sting's locker room. He's trying to find out if Sting really left the building and if Lex Luger can still compete in the Nitro main event. His Excellency shows up and he says, too bad about Lex, huh? Mean Gene wonders if Brett has anything to do with it and the Hitman feels insulted because Sting's the one guy Brett can really trust. Lex may be a good friend and a good partner, but he's not the best partner in the world. So with that in mind, Brett has an idea. Sting and the Hitman should team up tonight. Hollywood may be Brett's friend, but Brett looks up to Sting, and Brett says he won't let the icon down. Brett's gonna prove himself to Sting, Sting can trust the hitman. All Sting needs to do is agree to team up with the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. We've got two Code Scorpio vs The Godfather in a Brawl for All contest. On Nitro, we have some promos with Raven and Dean Malenko. Godfather's taking Dan Severn's spot here. Remember that Dan was only a one off replacement for someone else anyway. So, Godfather's getting another shot in the Brawl for All tournament. Godfather asks Scorpio if he wants three ho ho ho's instead of the beating of a lifetime, and Scorpio chooses pain. So the fight begins and there's some pretty tight boxing to start us off, with Scorpio showing some good footwork. He tries a big right and he gets caught out with Godfather's left. Godfather then throws some hard shots with good precision and Scorpio's forced to defend in the corner. Godfather gets 5 points for most punches landed. In round 2, Scorpio instantly goes on defense again, and again he takes another hard left hand. It looks like Scorpio's trying to tire the big man out, or maybe he's just waiting for the right opportunity to strike, but he waits way too long. 
Godfather gets in a few body shots and Scorpio's forced to fight out of the corner and give him credit, too cold Scorpio's tough as nails. He took too many body shots here though, so it's another 5 points to Godfather. Scorpio's now gonna do exactly what you'd expect him to do and go for takedowns. His first attempt gets countered though, so the plan backfires. He then tries for a knockout and you can see the effort in his face, but he's not putting the Godfather down tonight. A final takedown attempt gets blocked, but I'd still give Scorpio 5 points for most punches landed in round 3. Godfather, however, gets a point for the takedown counter. Godfather wins and Godfather faces Bart Gunn in the Brawl for All semi-finals. Sick Boy was supposed to face Kenyon next, but Raven says the match ain't gonna happen. Kenyon's been swallowed up by the darkness. Either Kenyon got taken out by the flock or he's having a few drinks with the flock. Raven says that he, Saturn and Kenyon have a triangle match coming up at Road Wild. I'm so glad to hear that. And Saturn should be worried about Kenyon's absence tonight on Nitro. It's very possible that the triangle match could become a 2 on 1 encounter. Lodi tries to cut a promo but Raven attacks his own teammate and he then tries to break his fingers. Even Sick Boy helps out. Saturn comes down and Raven gets out of harm's way. You think for a brief moment that Perry's gonna help out Lodi but of course not. It ends with Lodi taking a death volley driver. Mean Gene Okerlund's still outside Sting's locker room, but he gets a glimpse of Bret Hart talking to Scott Hall. Mean Gene wants to know what the hitman's playing at, but Bret runs away into a dressing room. I sincerely hope His Excellency isn't trying to screw Sting over. Speaking of Bret Hart, Bret! Bret Hart! Scott Hall! You've gotta be kidding me! Come along! Hey, go away! Mike! I think that was by design. That's good. Okay. I'm gonna, I, gee, that's gonna be great. Be, hey, what the death? Oh, wait a minute. Scott Hall, Bret Hart, gentlemen. What? Come here. Please. Go away. Ah! Christ. Everything was good except you met yourself. Dean Malenko comes out for an interview with Mean Gene next. Oh, Mean Gene gets around, doesn't he? James J. Baby Dylan's here too, and Dean says he's not gonna cry about how Jericho beat him last week. It was Dean's last chance at the cruiserweight belt. Dean accepts defeat, and he says if Jericho was here, he'd tell him to his face that he was the better man. Never one to miss an opportunity like this, Jericho walks out and he rubs it in a little. He says Dino Machino was a good opponent in every match they had, but Jericho still kicked his ass, and last week was Malenko's last chance to get in the ring with the Ayatollah. Dean says, not quite. Dylan pulls some bullshit loophole out of his ass, a rule that no one knew about. If a competitor shows a pattern of irresponsible behaviour and disrespect towards officials, then a special referee can get appointed for that individual's matches. So when Jericho meets Juventud Guerrera at Road Wild 98, Dean Malenko will referee the match. Can a mankind take on the New Age Outlaws next on Raw? On Nitro, Eddie Guerrero battles Hoofentude Guerrera. Before the Raw match, Billy Gunn says the D stands for determination and the X stands for excellence. I know someone who would disagree with that statement. The D stands for dong and the X stands for excrement. Dick shit. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Shut up. The Outlaws beat up Mankind while Kane was too busy playing with his pyro. When it settles down, Billy Gunn gets the upper hand on Mankind inside the ropes and Road Dog comes in with his knee drop. A back elbow sorts Road Dog out though and the big red machine comes in to wreck the real Double J. Road Dog gets a boot up in the corner and he tries to tag out, Kane's like not today mate. Billy gets a blind tag though and the Outlaws try a double suplex, Kane counters and it's the Outlaws who get suplexed. All of a sudden, Billy doesn't want to fight anymore so he cancels his own tag so Road Dog can continue getting his ass kicked. Mankind clotheslines James over the top rope. James takes a chair shot, Mankind takes a chair shot, Billy Gunn gets clotheslined, and now we've got a train wreck right in front of the commentary desk. Kane wrecks the outlaws before the match gets back in the ring. Mankind applies a sleeper on James, but it gets countered with a back suplex. Kane and Gunn get tagged in, Billy fires up and the outlaws manage to pull off that double suplex. Billy ends up fighting on the outside with Mankind though and Kane's able to tombstone Road Dog. Kane covers Road Dog even though James isn't the legal man and the outlaws lose the match. It was alright, but nothing special. On Nitro, the number one contender for the cruiserweight title, Juventud Guerrera, took a loss to 
Eddie Guerrero worked that one out. Eddie's victory was clean as a whistle too, but something that wasn't clean was this meeting of the minds right here. <laughs> they must have had the same idea. This was the only slip up in the match really, and everything else was pretty smooth. Guerrero hits Hoovy with a shoulder breaker, made famous by the great Rocky Maivia. I wonder whatever happened to that guy. And Eddie puts his opponent away with a frog splash. No underhanded tactics, no Chavo Guerrero interference. The number one contender was soundly defeated in the middle of the ring, so it should really be Eddie vs Jericho at Road Wild in my opinion. This WCW executive committee need to get their act together. Road Warrior Hawk takes on the fake Double J next on Raw. On Nitro, we've got uh, Liz Mark Jr. vs. Stevie Ray. Okay, whatever. Before the Raw match, Hawk apologizes for the state he was in last week. He apologizes to Titan Sports, Vince McMahon, the fans, his partner Animal, and Hawk hopes everyone can be understanding and he hopes everyone can forgive him. In the ring, Hawk was back on form, Double J gets clotheslined, he takes a press slam and he gets clotheslined again over the top rope. Tennessee Kathy Lee Gifford tells Double J to get it together but Jarrett didn't listen. Hawk pulls off a par slam followed by a fist drop and the destruction continues with a diving clothesline from the road warrior. Hawk runs shoulder first into his biggest enemy, the ring post, it's always the ring post. And Double J runs Hawk into the ring steps as JR explains that Sweet T Lee cost Jarrett a match last night on Sunday Night Heat. That's not a good sign, is it? Jared pulls off a Russian leg sweep. He asks Tennessee Jet Lee to hand him his belt, but the sweetness can't get his belt undone. I bet if Sensational Sherry was here, he'd have no issues getting that bad boy off. Double J hits a DDT. Lee's still too slow at getting his belt off. So Hawk delivers a neckbreaker, and Hawk wins this one on one match. Animal comes down to hug his partner, but there's no time for hugs because Cyborg Justice shows up and the Road Warriors are in deep, deep trouble. That is, until Darren Drozdov shows up. Droz helps the LOD out, the bad guys back off, and Raw moves on to its next match. Mean Gene stops Stevie Ray on his way to the ring to ask him once again about this TV title business. And Stevie says he's hurt that no one believes him in regards to Booker giving him permission legally to defend the TV title. Stevie has those documents with him this week though and Stevie confirms it's been notarized. Mean Gene's gonna look over it while Stevie wrestles what he calls the number one challenger in all of Mexico. Stevie tries to wrestle babyface and that lasts all of 10 seconds. He begins showing off and taking Lizmark very lightly, though to be fair Lizmark doesn't do a whole lot either. He does pull off this crossbody, but that's about it. Stevie hits a falling par slam, he then goes for the slapjack and ah there he is, Chavo shows up wearing Stevie's gloves. Chavo says he just went through Stevie's bag and he also found a notary stamp, one that can be used to stamp legal documents just like the one Stevie handed to Mean Gene. And this also means that Chavo can now get himself a driver's license or even a marriage license. Stevie chases Chavo back up the ramp and I wonder what Booker T thinks about all this as he heals up at home from that knee injury. Mr. McMahon cuts a promo on Raw's War, on Nitro, Kurt Hennig takes on Conan. I'm gonna get the Nitro match out of the way quickly, I'm sorry but this is another match where the outcome has no consequence at all, I'm sure. The thing is, I really like Kurt Hennig and I really like Conan, but you know what's gonna happen here. To give the match credit though, Kurt Hennig sold like an absolute champ for Conan with his inside out bumps being, well, perfect. The crowd also loved Conan's explosive offense and they were fully behind K-Dog from start to end. But it's Scott Norton who ends up costing Conan the victory. Henny gets a chance to choke Conan out, we see a perfect plex and NW Hollywood get one up over on the wolf pack. Kevin Nash comes down but it's too little too late. It would have made a bit more sense if Nash accompanied Conan to the ring after Scott Norton entered the arena with Hennig, but no, that kind of logic doesn't work in WCW. On Raw, Vinnie Mac says we're on the highway to hell and it winds up at SummerSlam. But as far as Undertaker and Austin are concerned, there's a roadblock on the highway tonight on Raw's War. McMahon says Austin and Undertaker are gonna lose their tag team titles to a team who's all about unity and family, Nation members Owen Hart and The Rock. And to give some examples of the lack of unity between the tag team champions, we get reminded about last week's attack just before Raw went off the air. 
Vince calls Undertaker out of the ring, but McMahon gets both Undertaker and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin says he gave Undertaker a beer last week because the big son of a bitch looked thirsty. Austin doesn't care about the tag team belts. All he cares about is beating The Undertaker at SummerSlam because the WWF Championship is all that matters. Austin leaves the ring, Undertaker grabs the microphone, and he tells Austin that McMahon's trying to drive a wedge between the champions. What's more, Austin's doing exactly what McMahon wants. Seeing as The Undertaker was man enough to challenge Stone Cold to his face a few weeks back, it's time for Austin to be a man and take what's his, his WWF Tag Team Championship belt. Austin marches down to the ring, he grabs his belt, he heads back up the ramp, but once again he's interrupted by The Undertaker. The Phenom says from now to SummerSlam, Austin's the safest SOB in WWF. But at the pay per view, The Undertaker takes what's rightfully his, the World Wrestling Federation Championship. The Rock and Owen Hart watched all this backstage, and Rock says the nation doesn't care about these two women crying about their tag team belts. Undertaker and Stone Cold will hit rock bottom tonight, and Owen Hart's gonna prove that he's not a nugget. Triple H vs X-Pac on Raw, Chris Jericho vs Rey Mysterio on Nitro. Chris comes to the ring wearing Hoovy's mask around his neck and this non-title bout. The mask is one of his favourite trophies. He goes on offence right away with a dropkick to the back of the head, he chops Mysterio down in the corner, and he tells the audience to keep the noise down when they chant Jericho sucks. Ray gets a foot up in the corner, he pulls off a Hurricane Rana followed by a springboard sit down senton, and when Jericho tries to leave the arena, he gets dragged back to the ring where he takes a dropkick. We come back from a commercial break and Jericho catches Mysterio for a military press shoulder breaker. It's pretty unique. We then see the Jericho goose step before Ray gets sent to the outside and Jericho pulls off a dropkick, sending Mysterio into the guardrail but also damaging Chris's ankle. Back in the ring, Mysterio counters a suplex and he performs a standing moonsault. Jericho hits a clothesline, he limps around the ring afterwards, but the injury doesn't seem serious as Jericho dashes at Ray for a corner clothesline. Mysterio then shows some serious balance and timing with a corner head scissor takedown that also included a fake out. Jericho then takes a stun gun and Ray impresses again with a springboard Arabian moonsault from the apron. Ray Mysterio was and still is pretty incredible. Speaking of incredible, Jericho gets back into it with this German suplex right here. Jericho goes for his signature springboard dropkick but Ray dodges it and Jericho finds himself on the outside. To get Chris back in the ring, Ray pulls off a spinning Hurricane Rana while Chris was on the apron, and Chris replies with a double underhook backbreaker. What a fantastic TV match this is turning out to be. Ray performs a pop-up sit-down face buster or an X-Factor. He then goes to end it with a West Coast pop, but Jericho throws Mark Curtis in harm's way and the referee gets taken out. Chris goes to put the land hammer on Ray, but Ray counters with a pen attempt. Dean Malenko then shows up and he counts Chris's shoulders to the mat. Gonna be a hypocrite here. I know I said Hoovy losing was dumb and that should also mean Jericho losing was equally as dumb, but this loss kinda evens it out, plus the finish works for the upcoming special referee match at Road Wild. Still, Jericho could have been in more danger if Guerrero won his match earlier on instead of losing clean. Match of the week without a doubt though, don't sleep on this one. Triple H vs X-Pac on Raw, the winner gets a shot at the IC title at SummerSlam. This one stems from the triple threat match last week, but it's still a bit strange seeing faction teammates fight each other. I'm also guessing that X-Pac felt more comfortable wrestling Hunter while just coming back from his neck injury. A hammerlock from X-Pac gets countered with a back elbow, Triple H performs a tilt world backbreaker followed by a big old suplex, and X-Pac takes Triple H's signature knee drop. Pac's quickly becoming the go-to guy for hard Irish whip corner bumps as you can see right here. Following this move, Kid's actually able to get in some offense with his spinning wheel kick followed by a quick leg drop, but Hunter replies pretty quickly with that Harley Race knee. Triple H then focuses on X-Pac's surgically repaired neck, Hunter drops a forearm and he hits Kid with a neck breaker, but he can't put X-Pac away. Pac fires back with a few hard chops in the corner, but he makes his usual mistake when trying to perform a standing bronco buster. It never works, it never will work, although I'd really like to see it work just for shits and giggles. Facebreaker knee smash from Hunter, spinning heel kick from X-Pac, Triple H takes another kick to the chin in the corner, X-Pac goes for the bronco buster, but then China gets involved by tripping X-Pac up. 
kid isn't too happy with the interference, so China smacks him in the face with a forearm shot. This leads to Triple H nailing the pedigree, and Triple H earns himself a match against the IC champion at SummerSlam. X-Pac and Hunter have an argument. Clearly this wasn't a fair fight, and Jim Ross thinks China may have been acting on her own accord, but it really doesn't matter, the decision is final. Something I want to point out too is that there wasn't a single rest hold in this entire match. It's not like they went 30 minutes or anything like that, but it's still pretty rare to see. Val Venus and Takamichi Nogu take on Kai and Tai, Scott Steiner cuts a promo on Nitro, <laughs> yes. Tony Schiavone says Scott Steiner's dangerous with a microphone and no truer words have ever been spoken. Big Papa Pump's not gonna talk about his freaks and peaks tonight though, he's actually being quite humble. He says that he was too cocky last week. He said the blood that flows through his veins was black and white, but Scott got a phone call from Mummy Steiner, and Mummy Steiner told her son that he's not better than anyone else. The blood that flows through his veins wasn't black and white, it was red just like everyone else's here tonight. Steiner didn't account for reptiles sitting in the audience and everyone knows that Reptile has green blood, but nonetheless, Mummy Steiner has made Scott see the light. Steiner removes his NWO shirt and he says, the NWO may be for life, but it's not for me. The crowd actually pop, they completely fall for it. Scott apologizes to the fans and he wants to apologize to brother Rick, so here comes the dog-faced gremlin Rick Bagwell to accept his brother's apology. Buff's clearly an obedient doggo, he can give his paw, he can roll over, and he can even talk, kinda. I would destroy you, right? Oh, 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 oh. Bagwell and Scott make a mockery of Rick Steiner and it's hilarious. Buff says these people in the audience are stupid, Buff and Scott's acting skills are absolutely off the charts. Buff wants Scott to cry again like he did a few months back, but he doesn't get a chance to unfortunately, because the real Rick Steiner shows up and he smacks Scott with a steel chair. The black and white NWO run down to save Scott, and Rick manages to get out of harm's way. Rick Steiner faces Scott Steiner this week in Sturgis. Over on Raw, <laughs> oh shit, here we go. Remember, if Venus loses, he's gonna get his PP chopped off by, <laughs> by Mr. Yamaguchi. Dick Togo takes a few big boots from Venus, as does Shofunaki. A brief comeback from Togo gets stopped by a Val Venus clothesline, and Togo then takes a few knee strikes, followed by a Russian leg sweep. The pervy Miss Yamaguchi loves it when Val shakes his hips, but Val pays for this when Kai and Tai team up to suplex the big Val Boski. Val fires back with a double clothesline, he goes to tag in Taka, but oh, Oh no, Taka's only gone and turned heel. Keep an eye on this guy right here. He rises from his seat in the most serious way possible, as if to say, No, no, this is not happening right now. It can't be. Taka DDT's Venus. Can Tai lay the boots in as Kyoko looks on, horrified? Taka reveals that Mrs. Yamaguchi is actually his sister as he slaps Val across the face, so it all makes sense now. Taka didn't like his sister getting reeled by Mr. Venus. Val takes a senton bomb from Dick Togo, Kai and Tai gyrate over Val's lifeless body, and then Kai and Tai drag Venus out of the ring for the public execution of the big Val Boski. It's time to choppy choppy, <laughs> choppy that pee pee. On Raw, we've got Dilo vs Severn and a Tiger Ali Singh promo. Yeah, Tiger Ali Singh. On Nitro, it's time for the weekly NWO Hollywood promo. The Nitro guards perform a dance in the ring, but the NWO's music plays and the black and white march down to terrorize Kimberly. Bischoff says Kimberly may be hot, but if it wasn't for Eric, both she and her husband would be nothing. Kimberly slaps Bischoff, and DDP falls right into the NWO's trap when he dashes down to rescue his wife. The Giant and Adams grab Paige while Disciple and Vincent hold Kimberly. Kimberly cries as Eric tells her to get a good look at her husband, and Eric starts ripping into Mrs. Paige by saying she's the most active nitro girl of them all, according to Penthouse magazine. Hogan says Kimberly's black and white from head to toe, the disciple and Vincent know all about that apparently, and Hogan begins punching Paige while Kimberly's forced to watch. The giant also choke slams Dallas. Hogan says if Kim wants a real man, she should pay a visit to Hollywood's house, because we all know Hulk loves banging other guys' wives, right? The NWO leave, Paige and Kimberly are left in the ring, and you know something? This is a pretty effective piece of TV when you compare it to the recent, more bland NWO escapades that we've endured over these past few months. The NWO going after Kimberly Page is nothing new, but it sure does beat the same old Hollywood Hogan promo week in and week out. On Raw, Dilo says he's being forced to defend his European title and he's only wrestling this match out of protest. That's brilliant, isn't it? I'm doing my job out of protest. 
Remember Dan the Man tore Dilo's pecs a few months back? Dilo has a reason to fear the beast, so Mark Henry comes down to back up his nation teammate. To be honest though, Dilo didn't really need any help because he completely destroyed Severn in the early portion of the match. Dan's sucking the big one here, and Dan's master, teacher and daddy Steve motherfucking Blackman isn't too happy about it. Blackman looks annoyed with Dan the Man Severn as Dilo chokes the beast on the top rope. This display of mediocrity sickens Stevie and he can't wait to discipline this so called beast after the match. Ken Shamrock, another student of Blackman, is also annoyed at Severn's lack of concentration and Ken's like, Master Blackman, let me show you how it's done. Ken then annihilates Dilo and Mark Henry at the same time, causing Severn to get disqualified but also causing Severn to realize he needs to up his game if he wants to remain in the Mervug Dojo. Severn tells Blackman he's annoyed at Shamrock and Steve says, well if you didn't suck so hard then maybe this wouldn't have happened. Dilo leaves with the European belt and Severn received 50 lashes for soiling the good name of Steve Blackman. Just before Dilo leaves he gets attacked by Edge, no reason for it at all, completely unprovoked. Maybe Edge is trying to impress Steve Blackman too. Backstage we see Kai and Tai attacking Val Venus, things aren't looking too good for the big Val Boski, and maybe Mr Yamaguchi really is gonna chop off Val's pee pee, let's wait and see. Next up Tiger Ali Singh came to the ring to cut a promo, yeah with Sunday Night Heat now being a thing a few lower card guys are getting the spotlight it seems but basically what we've got here is a Ted DiBiase rip off, he's even got his own Virgil. Tiger thinks he can pay American women to do whatever he wants because they have no class and no morals. He got some absolute stunner to eat dog food on Sunday Night Heat and tonight he's gonna pay another babe to come into the ring and remove her clothing for $500. The lady gets in the ring and Jerry Lawler wonders how many peeping Tom she's cured. She takes her clothes off and Tiger then decides to change the rules. He says he'll pay the woman to put her clothing back on. The crowd actually pop as she stops her tantalizing striptease and she's forced to pick the money up from the canvas. Absolutely riveting stuff here on Raw's War ladies and gents. Backstage Val Venus is brought to the chopping block, Yamaguchi San has his sword in hand and Val Venus could do with a miracle right about now. We end this week's episode with Owen Hart and The Rock vs Undertaker and Steve Austin on Raw, on Nitro Bret Hart and Sting take on Scott Hall and The Giant. Scott Hall grabs a mic and he tells Kevin Nash to quit acting like a baby and start acting like a man before the Nitro main event begins. Bret Hart then comes to the ring and Sting surprises everyone by coming to the ring wearing his white face paint. No one's sure what this means but Bobby Heenan thinks Sting snapped when he saw his old friend let out backstage and maybe this means Sting's done with the NWO. He shoves Brett with his bat clearly showing that the two aren't friends, and Brett smirks at the audience just before getting to work with the bad guy. Paul messes around before the lockup and Brett walks him into the corner. The hitman backs up a bit and he gets a little fed up with Scott trying to avoid any physicality, but then the two lock up and Brett goes on offense. He's actually laying it in and keep in mind he and Scott were seen talking to each other earlier on. Brett wants to tag out, Sting won't extend his hand so Brett tags the stinger anyway and the icon goes to work. Clearly Sting's being way more physical than his tag team partner as he attacks Giant on the apron and he puts Hall down with a face buster. Scott avoids a scorpion deathlock attempt, the Giant interferes from the apron, Scott puts Sting down with a clothesline and then the big man gets tagged in and Sting gets in no offense at all. Giant stands on Sting, he throws him in the corner a few times and he pulls off a Russian leg sweep. Seems a bit unnecessary for a guy his size but the damage has been done and now Scott's back in to do even more damage. The NWO work together while Brett, either purposefully or accidentally, keeps the referee distracted. Scott delivers his fall away slam, Sting tries to tag out while in a front face lock but Scott punches the hitman and Sting also rams Scott into Brett leading to heart falling off the apron. Sting tries his best to beat both guys and he does a pretty good job too, but the match comes to an end when Brett grabs Sting's ball bat and Scott holds Sting up for a free shot. Brett swings, Sting ducks, Scott gets nailed and Sting covers Hall. Sting wins the match for his team and it looks like we've got new tag team champions, but the decision gets reversed when Mickey J notices the ball bat, completely killing off the audience's huge pop. Still, Brett grabs his US belt and the tag belts while Sting gets beaten up by the giant. The hitman won't help his partner so Goldberg runs down just before Nitro fades out. The last thing we see on Monday Nitro this week is the giant taking a spear.
On Raw, Undertaker and Stone Cold have no problems working together as Undertaker stays on Owen while Stone Cold goes after The Rock. It settles down with Austin and Rock going to their respective corners while Owen Hart gets hit with Old School. In Old Rivals, Stone Cold and Owen get a chance to do some work with Owen hitting Austin with a spinning wheel kick and Austin putting focus on the knee after a missed insecurity. Owen tags out and the IC champ takes a back elbow followed by Austin's signature elbow drop and a suplex and then The Undertaker gets in to mix it up with The Rock. These two have cross paths all that much so far so it's interesting seeing these two work together. Undertaker gets out of a headlock with a back suplex and he hits what JR calls a dynamic leg drop. Owen Hart saves The Rock from a chokeslam and he tags in illegally while Tim White was distracted so from this point on you know the drill. The heels are going to do everything they can to stop Undertaker tagging out. There's a good spot where Owen hits another wheel kick after Taker hits Rock with a clothesline. The nation's strategy crumbles pretty quickly though and The Undertaker tags out after a big boot to Owen. Stone Cold fires up and it's like Austin hasn't forgotten about last year's SummerSlam as he lays the boots into the Blackheart. Austin even goes for a sharpshooter but Rock breaks it up. And look at this, check out Rocky afterwards, what a guy. Austin then gets taken to Chinlock City just off the Kickerby Kicking Highway. Both Owen and Rock deliver some severe chin abuse. Austin fights out, he gets set up for a rock bottom. But Austin counters and the crowd lose their minds when Stone Cold throws right hands. Both Rock and Austin go down after a double clothesline. They both tag out and the nation begin fading for The Undertaker. Owen Hart takes a big choke slam, but The Rock saves the match for his partner. Austin attacks Rock on the outside while Undertaker delivers a tombstone pile driver. He successfully pins Owen Hart and then Mankind runs down to apply the mandible claw on the dead man. Kane then shows up holding a chair. He takes a swing, Taker ducks out of the way and Foley gets hit. Undertaker grabs the chair from Kane and he too decides to have a crack at Mankind. Austin's still fighting Rock on the outside while all this goes down and Raw ends with the Outlaws hitting the ring and Austin hits Road Dog with a stunner just before Raw ends. It's hard to score it this week. Jericho vs Rey Mysterio was great. I also enjoyed the Sting and Bret Hart stuff. But Raw had a solid main event and a good X-Pac vs Triple H match. If I had to choose one this week though, I'd probably go with Nitro just because the match quality was better. In terms of storyline, you wouldn't miss much this week by skipping Raw. Well, except for Val Venus getting the chop. Raw still has 69 points. Nice. Nitro has 60 and we've got 16 ties. In the television ratings, Raw won with a 4.9. Nitro dropped quite a bit to a 4.2. WCW NWO Road Wild 98 is our next pay per view, a show seldomly covered on YouTube thanks to the main event. We'll check out all the action from Sturgis, including the scheduled Scott Steiner vs. Rick Steiner match, Jericho vs. Juventud Guerrera, and of course, the tag team main event featuring Jay Leno. Should be a belter, I'm sure. Thanks for watching, as always, guys, I do appreciate it. Have yourself a good week and take care. Someone else?